Hello, I'm Anthony from MyTapHandle.com and today I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop to convert your images and photos to a format that looks great when you laser engrave. So come on, let me show you how it's done. Handle.com and today I'm going to show you how to take your photograph, put it in Adobe Photoshop and change it to something that will engrave very well on a custom tap handle. By doing this you can have a great custom tap handle that's very unique to you. So today's example I took a old hammer here and I took a flush cut saw and I threw them on my dirty shop floor. You can see the stains around here. And now we're going to turn these into an artwork suitable of a piece of clip art suitable to use on a custom tap handle. So we're in Photoshop. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my life a little bit easier and I'm actually going to crop these. Uh, that way I have less background removal needed to do. So I'm going to crop that um, and end up with just this. The next thing I do is I typically come here and I will duplicate this layer, the background layer, by dragging that and create a new layer. And I will take the new layer and sandwich them in between. The background layer, this is really a habit. I know we have our wonderful history up here and we can go back if we think we made a mistake, but truly the background is just a habit and it was an insurance layer. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that background. So I'm going to click on the foreground of the background here, on this one here, and uh, I'm going to go through the process of actually cutting this out. Um, for me, I a lot of times for something like this, because I know it's going to go on a tap handle, the uh, accuracy of my cutout isn't quite as important because of the way that it, the artwork is going to be used. So in this case, I'm going to actually choose the polygon polygonal lasso tool. It's my uh, favorite one for the job for right here. Um, so what I'll end up doing is I'll come up here and um, I will um, I will come here and I'll start with the cutoff uh, flush cut saw and uh, I'll just start clicking around um, and looking at all the different places of where I want to, to cut out. Now one thing you'll see me doing that a lot of other folks probably don't do because they're a lot more accurate, I've been bitten so many by getting click happy, so I'll get almost done and I'll accidentally double click instead of, a, it feels like a double click instead of a single click and my whole cutout I have to start all the way over. So one thing that you'll find me doing here and you'll see in just a second is that a lot of times when I uh, get to a point where I feel like, oh I've maybe done a quarter of the work, I'll end up and I'll just kind of come back here and um, and go ahead and um, make that uh, background deletion uh, and kind of do it in steps as far as that goes. And then I'll continue the process. I'm going to go ahead because I know this is tedious work. I'm going to go ahead and uh, speed up the video at this point until I get back to something that uh, is of interest that you might be interested in um, as far as how I'm cutting things out or, or that nature. All right, so I've got the bulk of it cut out. I'm not too concerned with the individual teeth here because they'll look just nice as far as that goes. Really, the only thing I've got left to cut out here is that little hole. Um, typically, some people like to use the magnetic lasso throughout this whole process. For me, I'm still kind of a fan of the other lasso, but on a little hole like this with as nice and high contrast as this hole is, the magnetic lasso works really well. So as you can see here, I can just lasso around and cut that out and I have that. So that's not, now it's all cut out. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go to this layer right here. I'll make sure that I've deselected my selection by uh, control D, command D. And I will go ahead and I will fill in the background. I'll fill in the background uh, with white. And then I'll go ahead and I'll look at the rest of my cutout. Now keep in mind, this is going to be very small on a tap handle, so the accuracy isn't that important. But there are a few things that just irk me when I see them, like for example, down here, this uh, looks like it could be a little bit smoother. So what I'll uh, end up uh, doing is I'll make sure I go back to my background copy here, and I'll use my eraser tool that I've chosen over here. And then what I'll do is I'll just go in there and just barely round uh, around a few things and just smooth out that edge right there and um, just smooth it out just a little bit and this one's a little chiseled so I might smooth that one out just a little bit 
as far as that goes. So in reality, it's not something you really have to do a lot of, uh, but sometimes you might find something that, like this little nib right here, I'll smooth that out. Um, just a few things like that. So now that I've got that done, I'm ready to start to turn this into something that would be suitable for engraving. The key to engraving uh, something that's suitable is that you want it to be high contrast and you want it to look like a sketch from the start. Um, you can't. I can do engravings that are truly from photographs, but the best ones on tap handles they start off looking more like a line drawing, uh, line art than anything else. So, the first thing I'm going to do is take this background layer and the layer of white, and I'm going to merge them. Um, Command E, Control E, and I've merged those two layers. Then I'm going to duplicate those layers so I have so I have two of them there. Then I'm going to add an effects layer. And in this particular one, we're going to add um, hue and saturation. When we have hue and saturation, we're going to bring down on the effects layer, we're going to bring down saturation to make it black and white. So now we've got it black and white. Um, that's looking just fine. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually come over here to this layer and we're going to invert it. Um, Command I, um, Control I, and, uh, and we invert it. So it looks like a negative. Uh, so we have these two layers. Then we're going to go up to the um, transparency dialog box here um, and we're going to take a look and we're going to choose color dodge. And on color dodge when you do that, oh you've lost your image, it's gone away. But we're going to get it back very simply here. Um, when we go up to our filter and we go to blur and we pick a Gaussian blur, um, as you can see, oh, right away, uh, since we have the preview checked, it comes back. Now here's sort of like a, a little bit of trial and error, but what you're looking for is you're looking for something that looks more like a pencil drawing. Um, you know, if we have bigger here, that's not good. That doesn't look like a pencil drawing. That looks more like a black and white photo. So what we're doing is we're looking for something that looks more like a, a pixel drawing. And I think I found that uh, probably, um, my settings earlier on were probably just fine uh, when I was in the neighborhood of two or three uh, pixels and you're, it'll vary depending on the resolution of course uh, of yours but that looks good um, we'll, we're gonna make it pop in just a second so we're gonna say okay to that and it's already looking more like a pencil drawing and then we will go ahead and we're gonna add another effects layer and we're gonna add that um, we're going to add that as far as levels. And here what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the dark and we're going to get it more contrast, higher contrast. And as you can see, um, we are getting more and more darker lines. The key to something that looks good engraving is the fact that you do want a high contrast image. And in this case, these black lines here, these black lines here, these uh, that outline the, the hammer, they all look really good on laser engraving, and the whole uh, the whole thing will probably uh, show up uh, pretty well as far as that goes. So um, you know what you do is it, it's it's not uh, rocket science. Um, you kind of go to where it almost looks over the top, uh, something that um, is is the contrasty is a, is a little bit there. So right there, that actually looks good. So we're gonna call that good, and we're going to save it, and we will use it on a tap handle. So I'm gonna go up to File, I'm gonna to go to Export. Now me, my preference, I still love the Save for Web Legacy dialog box here. Obviously a lot of people do because Adobe has kept it in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Save for Web. And a JPEG is actually just fine. Um, it is a perfectly fine um, way to have artwork for your custom tap handle. The quality you do want to, to make sure it's a little bit higher um, because with the JPEGs you don't want a lot of JPEG artifacts because they could actually be engraved if it was really artifacty. Uh, I don't think that's a word but we'll use it. Um, so we're gonna say uh, high quality 80 is actually uh, just fine. Take a look at it. Great. I'm gonna hit save and um, we're going to uh, save it in our clip art uh, for tap handle folder here and uh, I'm gonna call it uh, um, uh, hammer flush for my hammer and flush cut saw and I'm gonna hit save and uh, I'm done ready for that uh, to be an engraving 
I uh, hope this has been a little bit helpful to you um, if you have your own artwork or photographs that you want to convert into something that's very good for laser engraving. Um, but this is just one example. There's all sorts of techniques and wonderful ways to do that. I just want to give you one in your toolbox. And please stay tuned for other videos that show how to make the best uh, of your ability to make your own custom tap handles at. I hope this video gave you some tips and tricks of how to take your images and your pictures and turn them into something that is easy and great to laser engrave. I look forward to seeing your designs on your next tap handle. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.